Hey guys, I'm Mary from The Fry Life. My husband and I do daily videos on YouTube about living with cystic fibrosis and just life in general. Some people have asked if I'm able to access my port cath by myself, and the answer is yes. I actually used to do this by myself through my college years. I lived in a dorm, and I just decided that I wanted to have control over my port and not have to rely on a nurse coming to my dorm room. That's what worked for me, so I was trained on how to do it. Now, I will tell you this. Since we got married five years ago, my husband does all the port care now. So I haven't done this in probably three or more years. So we'll be doing this together for the first time in a long time. So I'm gonna show you what works for me and maybe it will help you guys out if you are interested or maybe you're just curious. So here we go. You're gonna obviously need all your port supplies. Um, I have found that this brand, maybe more brands now, but this is the only one I know of, Trinity Sterile, it contains two sterile saline syringes and that's really important if you are doing this by yourself. I remember back in my college days, I would, it, you can do it without the sterile syringes by yourself, but you're gonna need extra pairs of sterile gloves and a lot of creativity as far as figuring out how to get the saline without unsterilizing your dressing. Thankfully, they now have dressing change kits that come with the sterile saline. Super duper. All right, so I'm gonna need my dressing change kit, which has gloves and the sterile field and all of that. A Huber needle. The needle I'm using today is actually a three quarter inch length, 22 gauge. Um, it'll work for, for the monthly flush. I just don't prefer this style of needle for my you know, week long uh, leaving it on my chest for IV antibiotics. So I'm just gonna use it for this infusion. And then if you guys like to use an extension set, I like to get like a six inch or longer IV extension to put on the end of the Huber needle so that it extends the tubing. So it, like if I'm hooking up to my IV when I'm in the middle of a store, I don't have to hike my shirt up to find my tubing. It just comes out the bottom of my shirt. I have found that that works really well. But again, since I'm not going on IVs, I'm not gonna use an extension today. I'm just gonna hook up a cap to the end of the Huber needle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put a sterile dressing on, but usually for a monthly flush, I don't put a dressing on. I'll just leave it hooked up, flush my saline, my 100 unit heparin, and then deaccess. Um, but today I am gonna put a sterile dressing on as well. You're also gonna to wanna to have a mirror close by. Depending on where your port cath is, you might be able to see it well just by looking down. Mine is kind of in the awkward position where if I look down, and I always make a wonderful face when I'm trying to do this, um, when I look down I can't quite see it so I have to look in a mirror and I usually have one close by so that I can um, aim and fire. Okay. I've got my 100 unit heparin ready and um, I've already washed my hands, so we are ready to get started. I will also mention that typically when I am accessing my own port, I'm in a room by myself and so I don't have to worry about how my shirt is. And because we're filming this, I actually taped my shirt where I wanted it so that it would be in the right place. But if you guys are doing this alone, it's probably easiest to either not even wear a shirt so it doesn't get in the way or find one that works for you. I don't use any numbing cream. I used to. I've just decided that it's, yeah, I'll feel it, but it's fine. I've just decided to forget about it. Um, but there is such a thing as numbing cream if you guys want to look into that. It does work most of the time. And um, you, usually you just put it on, leave it on for a half hour, and then take it off and you're ready to go. So we start by opening up our dressing change kit. You wanna be careful to not touch anything inside. I'm only touching the rim. The most important thing to remember when you are accessing a port, whether you're doing it or somebody else, is keep it sterile. You just have to remember where your hands have touched so when I pull out the sterile field, I'm gonna take it out on the edge and then 
make sure I don't touch the middle at all because I'm not sterile yet. All right, I've got my sterile field. I've only touched the edges, so I'm good to go. Next, I dump all of my items onto my sterile field without touching anything. Peel it open. It's good to always have extras with you in case you dump it and it rolls off or something. Now, the syringes that come in these packages are not sterile, so I'm not gonna open this one and put it on my sterile field. So I'm just gonna place this one on the side and we will get there eventually. Okay, then everything else is in my dressing change kit, so here we go. I don't remember if I've always worn a mask, but it's a good idea. I'll just leave it up to you guys if you decide that you and your care team have decided you need to wear the mask or not. I am gonna not wear it today, mostly because I'm pretty sure it's gonna block my view and it makes me not be able to breathe very well, so I'm just gonna put that to the side. Okay, sterile gloves. Um, you're gonna want a little extra room, so I'm just gonna move this to the side, pull my sterile gloves out of the container, and it comes in paper, or sterile paper, so you just open it up, and you've gotta remember not to touch anything. When you pick up the gloves, you touch the cuff part, and then take your time. This can be tedious, but take your time to get them on correctly. And I'm only touching the inside of the cuff, nothing that's gonna touch my port or the sterile field or anything else. Now this glove is still sterile, so I can pick up the other glove and work it on. All right, once you've got your gloves on, you want to go ahead and hook up the needle to the cap and or the extension if you've decided to do that. So now that I'm sterile, I am okay to touch anything on this field. Um, take off the little plastic extras, screw it on nice and tight, and then you've got your needle and your cap hooked up. I'm gonna grab a saline out of the sterile dressing change kit. I, again, I'm so thankful they put these in here. Um, the whole thing is sterile, so I am free to use it. I just primed it so that it doesn't have any more bubbles in here. And you want to prime your tubing and your needle. We realized after we filmed that we didn't show you how to stay sterile if your dressing change kit does not come with a sterile saline. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how to make that work if you need to use an unsterile one, how you can continue to stay sterile. You're gonna need a saline, and I have this just sitting next to the dressing change kit. I did not put it inside, because that would not be sterile. These packages, including when you take the plastic off, the syringe inside is still not sterile. The plastic is not. So once you take the package off, set it to the side and do not place this syringe on your sterile field because that will make it unsterile. You will definitely need an extra pair of sterile gloves. You can just have your home care company send you extra packs of sterile gloves. You can't use just the ones out of the box because those are not sterile. Your dressing change kit will come with a pack of sterile gloves and then you will need one extra. Um, so at this point I will have already dumped my sterile needle and cap onto the sterile field and that is where I will pick up with this procedure. I'm gonna go ahead and put on my first pair of sterile gloves which are from the dressing change kit. Once you have your first pair of sterile gloves on, you can go ahead and hook up your needle and cap or extension if you are also doing an extension. All right, all I have is my needle, my cap. Next, I need to go ahead and get my syringe prepared. So you can go ahead and take this pair of sterile gloves off because the next thing you're gonna do is not sterile and you don't wanna think that those gloves are still sterile. So I've got my syringe. I'm gonna go ahead and take the cap off and get the air bubble out of it. I'm gonna go ahead and lay this with just the tip 
on the very edge of the sterile field but not the like handle and all of that where I've you know obviously touched so I'm just gonna lay it on the very edge so that the, the tip of it is still sterile okay now you're ready for your second pair of sterile gloves you're gonna go ahead and put just one hand on your dominant hand so I've got my package of sterile gloves here and I'm just gonna put on the right hand all right why we, why we are putting just one on so far is because this hand and this side is sterile, this hand and this syringe is not sterile. So I am going to pick up this syringe with the unsterile hand, keeping the tip sterile because I did not touch it, and hook it up to the sterile cap. Now, keeping this hand sterile, you're gonna go ahead and push the saline through to prime the line and then clamp it. And you can just hold this over the whatever to squirt it out. When you set this back down on the sterile field, remember to keep the syringe off to the very edge and go ahead and set it down. And it's time to put on your second sterile glove. This hand is still sterile. All right, I'm fully sterile now. All right, from here on out, you can touch from here over, because this is still sterile, but remember, don't touch that syringe because it is not sterile. You can go ahead and watch the rest of the procedure as we filmed it earlier, because again, I do have the salines in my dressing change kit, so we already filmed it, but I hope this was helpful if you do not have those salines in your dressing change kit. Good job, guys, you can do it. All right, so we've got our needle primed and ready, we've got our dressing for later, and we're gonna do chloroprep to prepare my port for action. Um, so this one comes with a skin protectant. I'm not gonna use that. And then it also comes with the chloroprep swabs. So I'm just gonna say, I, since I'm already sterile, I can't move any of this stuff because it's not sterile. But if I wasn't doing this video, I would have Peter come and clean, like clear all this stuff away so it's not like in the way. But hey, if you're doing this by yourself, you gotta make, make it work. So just remember that nothing goes on the sterile field that isn't sterile. So I'm opening up the swab package and apparently it's like really hard to open. Um, you may have these little swabs or you may have a chloroprep wand. I prefer those but this is what I have. And I am gonna go ahead and just look in the mirror because it helps me be able to see. So I'm just, this is how I've done it and it works well for me. Um, I just start at my port and work my way out. This is probably the most important step. Um, I've also noticed that when I am cleaning my port and the area, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one again. I need to clean every speck that is going to be under the dressing because the dressing will not stick properly. Now my port's pretty wiggly as you can see like when I'm cleaning it. So you'll just have to get to know what your port does. So basically when I go to stick the needle in, I have to brace it really well or else it will wiggle and move. All right. I've done my three chloroprep swabs. I'm ready for the next step, which is putting the needle in. Usually the needles come with a little cover over the needle part. Just take that off. Make sure you figure out how to grip your needle well so that you can see and you feel like you can hold it well. Next, your hands are sterile, your chest is sterile. Um, You'll wanna wait a minute or two and let it air dry. Um, don't blow on it or anything, just let it sit, let it dry. Once it's dry, um, my most important tip is spread the skin over your port 
grab it and spread it. That, for me, helps a lot. Now when you spread it, as you can see, it can move the port a little bit. So you, don't, you wanna be careful to keep it in the right place. But um, you just spread the skin and then stick the needle in. All right, I've got my skin spread. I'm looking in the mirror here. And I'm just gonna, okay, do I have it clamped? Okay, the tubing is clamped, it is primed, and I cannot see. I see, I remember doing this back in college. I used to say, hold on, I can't see. All right. You wanna go straight in, straight into the back of the port, and you do have to apply a pretty good amount of pressure to the needles to, to go through the port and into the back. All right. Oh my goodness. I have not done that in so long. All right, so here's how I do it. I flush in a little bit and then I pull out to make sure I get blood return, which will tell me I'm in the right place in the port. It felt good when I pushed it in, I could feel the back of the port, that's what you want. All right, I'm flushing, it's flushing, there's gonna be blood in the tube, so if you don't like that, don't look. Yep, blood return, woohoo! Life with a needle in your chest. Life with a needle in your chest. All right, as you can see, it's flushing well, um, it's not stiff or anything, all right, I'm flushed. I just flushed the whole saline syringe in. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect that. That's fine, and I'm just gonna let the tube hang um, because I'm not gonna need to touch that again. Discard that. All right, like I said, this is not the needle that I would use if I am going to be accessed for a week or more, like, you know, a week at a time. With this needle, if this is the one I would have to use, and for most needles, I like to put a little bit of gauze under the wings of the needle, just to cushion it a little bit. Um, it'll depend on how your port sits on your chest, if you need that cushioning or not. Um, there is sterile gauze in the dressing change kit, so that's what we're gonna look for, a little piece of sterile gauze, and just by my preference, I like to make sure that it is folded perfectly. I'm meticulous about that because I figure I'm gonna have to look at it for the next week, so I wanna make sure it looks good. I'm gonna use this little two by two, and I am going to fold it, and I'm probably just gonna fold it this once. That looks about good to me. My chest and my needle are still sterile, so I'm good to go ahead and adjust this how I want it. Remember, Remember to talk to your care team. Ultimately, talk to your care team about what, what is good for you and your port. Um, for me, I do not let the gauze touch the needle, the insertion site, um, just because I'm not comfortable with that. I just feel more comfortable if it's down slightly. When I'm breathing, I'm just looking away so I'm not breathing straight on it. And I just hold my breath when I look down at it. Okay, I've got my gauze in place. I like my tubing to go pretty much straight down. Sometimes I turn it to the side slightly. Looks good. I've got my dressing, and here's how I like to put it on. I prefer to have as little to no wrinkling as possible, except I do one strategic wrinkle at the bottom around the tubing. Slowly take off. I use the clear Tegaderm no gauze on the tegaderm. I have found that this one works best for me and my port and it doesn't um, peel off too easily. I start at the top rim, lay it down first, work my way down, and then make that wrinkle around the tubing at the bottom. This could get a little tricky with my shirt, but again, if you are by yourself, it's probably easiest to wear a shirt that wouldn't interfere with the dressing, but for filming's sake, we'll just see how this goes. You wanna make sure that you have it high enough that it will seal around the needle at the top. 
but you'll also have enough at the bottom to seal at the bottom. All right, I've laid the top down. Press, press, press. The bottom is still open. Press, press, press. Okay, so see my shirt's in the way. Peter said, make one hand unsterile, one hand sterile. Good thinking. Um, all right, before you seal the bottom, this is how I found it. I don't need to be sterile anymore because I'm not reaching up under. What I like to do is pull the tubing up and then pinch around it to seal the tubing in there and then seal it to your chest. All right, start peeling off the paper, which is just like a um, stabilizer and immediately press on the edge of the dressing so it, it sticks to your skin right away. All right, ta-da, there we go. It's now completely sealed so I can take off my sterile gloves and breathe a little bit. Um, all right, so I say for the first time in many, many years, that went as well as it could have. I'm glad I got it on the first try. Um, the As you can see, there's like air under here and it's stretching a little bit. I'd say after about an hour, the Tegaderm or whatever dressing you use relaxes a little bit and it won't be so stretchy and red. Um, and the air that's under there will kind of seep out after time and the dressing should lay a little bit flatter. I do like having my tubing sealed like this because one, if you were to accidentally tug on it, it's kind of stronger sealed on there. And the second reason is if you are near water, if you're taking a bath or something and water splashes up, it is sealed. It's not gonna, water cannot go up. I'm not saying that you can submerse this in water, not at all. But I just like knowing that if I were to splash it, it is sealed and water isn't gonna go up there easily. I will say that I like this Tegaderm the best because for me, it seals really well. I have tried the Tegaderm that has the built-in white gauze border and I, I'm not sure why, but for me, it doesn't stick as well. And if, again, if I'm like taking a shower, if water droplets come down over this dressing, they roll right off. With the gauze border dressing, it seems that the water seeps in there and then it can cause it to peel up. So for you and your skin, figure out which dressing works best. Some people have more sensitive skin than others. Um, this, this dressing does work well for me and I like it. I think that's about all that I can think of right now. If you guys have further questions, you can ask them down in the comments. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed it or thought that it was ridiculous <laughs> with me trying to <laughs> stab myself in the chest, please give us a thumbs up. And again, if you are interested in seeing the tutorial on, I can't believe I call it a tutorial. It sounds like a makeup tutorial or something. If you are interested in seeing the video my husband and I did of him accessing my port, you can click over there and see that. <coughs> <coughs> and as always, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Okay, now that I have it secure, I'm going to just go in and in one fell swoop, put the needle in. It was good, I barely felt it.